ADIAN is a foundation for diversity, solidarity and human dignity. Uh, we were five uh, founding members. We co-founded it in 2006, 11 years ago, and with the aim of uh, providing spaces for encounter and for promoting diversity on the, uh, as, as a richness on both the personal and uh, the uh, national levels. Um, ADIAN works in, uh, in Lebanon, the Arab region and globally and it is divided into uh, four different uh, uh, departments, the Institute of Citizenship and Diversity Management, the Community, the uh, Media Department, and recently the Rashad Center for Cultural Governance. I may add uh, that in the background I mean, of the foundation of ADIAN, there is this um, assumption from the founders that uh, today we need to go beyond interreligious or interface dialogue and to to work together in fact and so soli in solidarity and for diversity which means that uh, instead of uh, always uh, being identified uh, in relation to our uh, background or affiliation religious or our our personal denominations it's more in fact to identify together the challenges in our societies that we are called to uh, to face them together and to to join our forces um, uh, in, in facing these challenges and in trying to, in fact, contribute to build better societies while we are promoting diversity and uh, at the same time uh, fostering uh, unity and solidarity. And we as a team are a diverse team. The founding members are both Christians and Muslims. Fadi is a Christian, he's a priest actually, I'm a Muslim uh, scholar. And the team of Adyan is also diverse, as Lebanon is diverse. But the most important thing within our team is the solidarity. So we say that even if the team would have been of one uh, denomination, as long as each one carries all the others in their way of thinking, carries um, all denominations, human dignity and solidarity, then we, uh, we would be living the mission of Adyan. Lebanon is uh, well known to be the country um, of uh, diversity and coexistence, in fact. It's, uh, it has been um, highlighted and presented by so many people uh, as an example for coexistence, uh, not only in the Middle East, but for the world. And, and basically, I think, for this uh, idea of having uh, uh, Christian communities from different denominations and Muslim communities from different denomination, denominations, in addition to a very tiny, small community of Jewish, in fact, Jewish community in Lebanon, uh, living together in a system, in the political system that allows the expression of diversity, the guarantees of religious freedom and freedom of conscience, but at the same time, the unity of the, of the country. And, um, and I mean, Lebanon went through a, a, a terrible uh, war uh, part of it was also a civil war where communities were involved in the conflict, uh, or at least the conflict took the aspect of uh, uh, a religious religious conflict or interreligious conflict. But after after the war, all the communities were able also to continue living together again. This is this is what is seen in general from Lebanon, uh, from outside. But at the same time, we are still facing huge challenges uh, to to make from this unity of the country, from this coexistence. Uh, a more authentic one and more, I would say, uh, fruitful one. Um, and so part of the challenges I can name uh, the sectarianism, sectarian feeling among the population, and especially the young generations. Uh, this is due to many, many uh, problems uh, uh, that we are still carrying on with us. Um, part of these problems is the fact that uh, we have wounded memories and divided memories in our society that were not really uh, healed and, and we, we missed, I think, after the Civil War, a, a serious work on healing memories uh, of different communities and, uh, and citizens in the society. Another problem is, in fact, uh, also we failed to have a real transitional, transitional justice in our society. So um, uh, those who were responsible of the conflict and sometimes of uh, I mean, uh, crimes against uh, humanity, I mean, uh, ter terrible crimes during the war were not uh, really uh, accountable of, of what they did and even they are still in fact in power today. So um, lack of transitional, transitional justice, um, uh, wounded memories without real healing process of, of these memories, uh, but at the same time also a very unstable uh, regional context in fact and this is one of the major 
problems in the region and that is directly affecting Lebanon. Uh, in the 70s, when we had the, the civil war in Lebanon, 75, the major problem was, in fact, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the fact that the Palestinians were in, in, in Lebanon and, uh, and this, um, this, the framework of this uh, Palestinian uh, uh, situation and, and Israeli-Palestinian conflict was hugely affecting Lebanon. Today, it's another situation. It's the Syrian uh, war and the fact that we have in Lebanon more than one million and a half Syrian, uh, which means uh, almost uh, uh, the third of the population is, uh, is a refugee population in Lebanon, which, is, which constitutes a huge pressure on the social level, economic level, uh, and, and other also um, I mean levels in, in, in Lebanon. So this is another challenge that is today really uh, putting pressure on, um, on the stability and the coexistence in the, uh, in the country. I mean, the importance of Lebanon is the, the idea that the constitution of Lebanon is the only one in the, in the whole area that doesn't say that uh, uh, one religion is the state religion or that doesn't say that one religion is the source for, uh, for jurisprudence or for laws. So um, as a basis, this is an, an, a major opportunity. Uh, for us to be working from Lebanon and it has its credibility, as Fadi said, as an example for, uh, for, the, for the rest of the world, for Arab countries, because we also work with Arab countries. And uh, I would say another opportunity today is all of this change that happened recently and all this diversity that came to the surface after the Arab Spring, after the recent events in Arab countries, which is uh, making people think how we need to manage diversity and this is where there's a lot of demand to what we what we give the trainings that we give on inclusive citizenship on diversity management and another opportunity I would say today is is uh, is the youth uh, the youth who are looking for answers who are also fed up with either a uh, uh, sectarian uh, uh, discourse or uh, with a, with a, um, I mean, uh, uh, conservative uh, uh, but very closed on uh, on different groups uh, discourse that want a new discourse that where uh, uh, I mean people can live together as citizens from different uh, denominations also where people who are atheist agnostics can also participate with religious people in the public sphere in the in in the in the uh, fostering of citizenship. I think that the need today is for more authenticity, in fact, in, uh, for religions in the public life and in the public sphere, which means that I think also youth are fed up with this discourse saying all religions uh, call for peace and we work for peace, but then the internal discourse is more a closed discourse, a sectarian discourse, and not really inclusive and comprehensive. So um, this is why I think more and more people are being convinced that uh, there won't be a, a real future and sustainable development and stability and peace in the whole region of the Middle East or the MENA region uh, without citizenship, in fact, and what we call in Adyan inclusive citizenship, meaning that citizenship, citizenship that is inclusive uh, of cultural and religious diversity, religious freedom, and social justice. And um, uh, as well as governments has to uh, uh, work for, for, for these uh, uh, values and realities, but also um, the, the civil society is called to participate and increase its participation for uh, to, to achieve, uh, I would say, these uh, uh, ambitions and um, uh, and expected, uh, let's say, future. Uh, and at the same time, I would say the faith-based organizations, I mean, and uh, religious institutions or any faith-based organization or even the commitment or engagement of any individual, even from a faith-based perspective, has to take into consideration these three challenges today. Because the issue of, uh, of promoting diversity and managing it is so, I, I mean, is, is so important to be worked on at different levels. We work with youth, we work with experts, we work with religious leaders, and we work with civil society organizations and trainers uh, to, to, to multiply this. 
What we do, for instance, at the Institute of Citizenship and Diversity Management at Adyan is uh, work with experts and also religious uh, scholars or scholars of religion uh, to, uh, to reflect together and sometimes bridge between uh, religious scholarship and uh, uh, non-religious scholarship. Uh, about issues, for example, on freedom of religion and belief, about inclusive uh, citizenship or citizenship and diversity, um, about issues related to religion and public life. And, uh, and then we translate these reflections into uh, tools, so uh, to, to train trainers on, the, on those tools. So we develop modules, for example, on inclusive citizenship, on, uh, on religious freedom, and train trainers from mainly from Arab countries on these uh, on these issues to be able to develop this. But also we work with youth, uh, um, so we have programs in schools, and we also work with ministries. So we also work in advocacy to, uh, for example, change education in order to integrate these uh, uh, these, uh, these these concepts. In fact. Uh and uh, it's not for humility saying this, but we don't work for um, any personal recognition. We work for social change. And to obtain social change, we, we seek uh, to influence policy making, so on the governmental level, but also in, I mean, organizational level, uh, on, the, on, a, on a national level or regional level or international. Uh, and at the same time to increase uh, the engagement of uh, community-based engagement of youth, especially youth people in, uh, in their own uh, societies. And the true recognition that we seek is in fact to see change happening in our societies and, uh, and the societies evolving towards more inclusiveness, more peace, more social cohesion and, uh, and more soli solidarity. So that's why it's, um, uh, it's, it's, it's a necessity to join you know, different forces, the academic uh, uh, dimension with the political one and the grassroots level, with the decision maker making levels to make sure that uh, what we are working on is not just staying in books on shelves, but is being transferred into either policies on the political level or engagement on the grassroots level. In fact, I had the chance to be part of this uh, a very interesting project, co-authoring uh, a book, which means that also a research uh, process that progressively led to, uh, to develop uh, this book together with, uh, with Naila. Um, so the title of the book is Divine Hospitality, and as you said, we introduced in this book uh, the concept of spiritual solidarity. Let me just first say that uh, uh, this, this concept uh, was proposed by uh, the Council of Catholic Patriarchs in the Middle East, in the Orient, in 94, in a pastoral letter that they published in 1994, where in fact they used this expression of spiritual solidarity, which in, in, a, in a Christian theological uh, understanding, it would be the equivalent of communion between Christians, but to talk about a type of communion between believers from different religions, and namely uh, the context of the letter was talking about Christian-Muslim uh, relations. Um, and in this letter, in fact, they said that uh, uh, spiritual solidarity is to be together before God and to, to believe that when we, uh, when we stand before God, we stand together, meaning that with the other uh, believers, I mean, f brothers and sisters from other, other religions, namely here Christians and Muslim. And God wants us to uh, stand before him and, and, to, and to come to him with our prayers and our intentions and our engagements uh, in this way as we are united uh, within this framework of uh, spiritual solidarity. So this was a concept that we, um, uh, we used in the, uh, in the book to explain in a way that um, the Christian-Muslim relations uh, uh, are to, to, be, to be understood or also to be uh, lived in a larger framework, which is the divine hospitality framework. I mean, we are not together because we want to be together. We are together because God sees us like this and wants us to be like this and, and invites us to be 
like this and to hold this common responsibility of being believers together before him and before the humanity. And this is why within the framework of divine hospitality that encompasses all of us, uh, uh, we are called to live the spiritual solidarity. And the, the, that pastoral letter also um, talks about carrying within us the uh, hopes and fears of the other. Um, it recognizes that as groups, we are not only um, religious groups, we are communities that have their own histories, that have their own memories, that their own hurt from each other, especially in our part of the world where there has been wars, there has been conf conflicts between uh, different communities. So it recognizes that and it recognizes the need to, to, to recognize each other and recognize the hurt, the hurt of each other to be able to construct together. This is why also at Adyan we've started something uh, that is called the Spiritual Solidarity Day. We yearly have a Spiritual Solidarity Day where we celebrate a common value uh, together, Muslims and Christians, but also we have a Spiritual Solidarity Award that is given to people who have given their lives to uh, uh, the defense of uh, diversity, the defense of others, to working with others and for others. And we also had um, a film to uh, to promote figures of religious figures who in times of crisis in times of war when people tend to generally close on their own shell and have a very uh, sectarian discourse based on victimization and hatred of the other uh, which is very normal in cases of, of war but those people even in those times decided to still work with and for the other as, as examples of this uh, spiritual solidarity. And this is very much needed in our part of the world today, for example, with all that is happening from ISIS and uh, uh, similar groups where we need to be together from different religions, uh, safeguarding each other, and not one group trying to defend its own, uh, uh, its own rights or, uh, or its own presence in the area, but each other uh, carrying this responsibility together. And uh, maybe to add that um, uh, from the perspective of divine hospitality, it is also to understand that um, living hospitality from a spiritual perspective uh, and from a spiritual solidarity perspective is not just uh, making a space for the other in our life and in our own space, but also accept that the stranger, the other, uh, uh, he can also or she can host us and welcome us and so to accept to to go to meet the other and not just to say that okay I have a space for the other for the stranger for the immigrant for I mean the refugee um, we, we are called to be responsible and welcoming and, and hospitable for for, for uh, the others and especially the vulnerable but it's more important in fact to be ready to be um, welcomed and hosted by the other and, and in his or her own framework also. So uh, experiencing divine hospitality and real spiritual solidarity uh, requires the fact to move from our uh, internal, let's say, security and, 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 and boundaries and to go beyond and to let the other uh, host us and, and, and welcome us. And, and this, is, this is the deep meaning of uh, divine hospitality. I think today one of the most important issues for Islamic theology is to um, is to respond to uh, to three uh, main points. First, how it conceives of the other, how it perceives the other, the question of religion and state, and the third is authenticity. Um, we, strangely enough, the presence of ISIS has uh, shaken a little bit the Islamic scene. And we've seen uh, over the past years uh, some new documents from, uh, from within Islam uh, going towards religious freedom, talking about um, that Islam doesn't call for an Islamic state, but that any state that is uh, defending human rights has its legitimacy within Islam. And these are texts that came out from Al-Azhar, which is considered one of the most important uh, Islamic centers. Um, so, but these topics are still, uh, uh, I mean, as they are very important documents, but need, still need to be worked on theologically and reflected on. 
so those two basically to uh, as a response to to uh, to ISIS and such groups but also a third question I think is very important is the question of authenticity and I think that there's something in our um, in, in, in our Islamic mental construct that from the beginning linked the authenticity of religion with victory and we need today to uh, to challenge this and to rethink that the authenticity of religion is is criteria criteria of uh, uh, of what we call religious social responsibility of how we can as religions help and serve our societies and not only our community but our societies at large maybe to add from a christian perspective and from an interreligious interreligious perspective i think two challenges one on the level of political theology and um, namely religious freedom in fact and uh, and how we can uh, tackle theologically in fact the fact of uh, um, uh, promoting uh, a human dignity i mean from an anthropological perspective uh, and also at the same time uh, re-questioning uh, the, the status of truth and the concept of truth in religion and so combining both to to be able to handle and to promote religious freedom and religious freedom not only for one community but for for all uh, uh, all people and the second challenge is not far from this one it's i would say uh, within the missiology uh, uh, context which is also how to combine at the same time uh, sincere and authentic interreligious dialogue and collaboration and um, uh, still um, uh, handling and managing what is in, uh, in Christianity evangelizations uh, or mission and what is in Islam da'wah or mission also and how we can at the same time uh, stay um, faithful and, and responsible uh, within our religion to these uh, responsibilities uh, very challenging responsibilities and be authentic in our relation with the other and in our collaboration with the other I think it will be one of the most challenging uh, uh, on the conceptual level and the practical level one of the most challenging situations in the coming years uh, within the Christian Muslim relations